Thank you, Pamela. Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by saying no mosque here. Exactly. May I may I ask you to be silent for 10 seconds. Just be silent and listen for 10 seconds. What we hear here in New York are the sounds of life of the greatest city on earth. No place in the world no place in human history is as vibrant and dynamic as New York City. You hear the cars. You hear the cars. You hear the people. You hear them rushing to their various destinations. You hear the sounds of business and pleasure. You hear the cheers. You hear the cries, the buzzing sounds of human activity. And that is how it should be, always. But if you close your eyes, and please, close your eyes, it's a beautiful day, but close your eyes. I have been told that this day, nine years ago, was just the same as today, a beautiful day. And remember, or try to remember, try to imagine the sounds that were heard here exactly on this spot, under the same blue sky, exactly nine years ago. Those were the sounds of shock, the sounds of destruction, the sounds of panic, the sounds of pain, the sounds of terror, the sounds of war. And did New York deserve this? Did America deserve this? No. Did the West deserve it? Of course, we did not deserve this. And we don't deserve a mosque on ground zero either. <clears throat> what, my friends, would you say to people, and unfortunately those people exist, people that argue that New York, that America, that the West had itself to blame, for those terrible sounds. There are people, unfortunately, in this city who argue this. And they are angry because we are gathered here today to commemorate, to make a stand, and to, we have to, and this is what we have to do, to draw the line. My friends, I have come from the other side of the Atlantic to share your grief for those who died here nine years ago. I have not forgotten how I felt that day. The scenes are imprinted on my soul as they are on yours. But our hearts were not broken in the same way as the hearts of the relatives and friends of those who lost their lives here. And many relatives of the victims are here in our midst today. And I wish, nine years later, but still I wish to take this opportunity to express my deepest and most heartfelt condolences to them and to all the people of New York and this beautiful country, America. Humbly, I stand here before you as a Dutchman and as a European. I too, however, cannot forget. How can anyone forget? And let me remind you of the words from Daryl Worley's 9-11 song that I hope and presume most of you know. Daryl Worley sang, Have you forgotten how it felt that day to see 
your homeland under fire and our people blown away. Have you forgotten when those towers fell? We had neighbors still inside going through a living hell. And Worley's response, ladies and gentlemen, Worley's response is our response. No, we will never forget. <clears throat> we, are, we are here today because we have not forgotten all the loved ones that were lost and those left to carry on. And neither has the world. When the forces of jihad attacked New York, they attacked the world. And amongst those lost were people from 55 nations, people of every religion, of every persuasion. No place on earth, on earth was more multi-ethnic and multilingual than New York's proud towers. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly the reason that they were targeted. They constituted an insult to those who hold that there can be no peaceful cooperation among people and nation without submission to Sharia. To those, indeed, to those who wish to impose the legal system of the Islamic ideology to the rest of us. But, as we all know, as we all know, America, New York, and Sharia are incompatible. New York, New York stands for freedom, for openness, and for tolerance. Indeed, New York is rooted in Dutch tolerance. New York is tolerant, not intolerant. Suppose New York were intolerant. Suppose it would only allow people of one persuasion within its walls. Then it would not be New York, but it would be like Mecca. <laughs> Mecca, a city without freedom. Whatever your religion your persuasion or your gender is, in New York you will find a home. But in Mecca, if your religion is not Islam, you are not even welcome to enter the city. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Imam Faisal Abdul Raouf, who by the way is not a moderate, this Imam claims the right to build a mosque, a house of Sharia here on this hallowed ground. But friends, my friends, but we have not forgotten. That is why we are here today, to draw the line here, today, on this sacred spot. <clears throat> we are here. We are here today in the spirit of America's founding fathers. We are here today in the spirit of freedom. We are here today in the spirit of President Abraham Lincoln who freed the slaves. And President Lincoln, he said, and let me quote, those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves. And these, these important words are key to our survival. The tolerance that is crucial to our freedom requires a line of defense. And Mayor Bloomberg uses tolerance as an argument to allow Imam Raouf and his sponsors to build a so-called Cordoba mosque. But Mayor, But Mayor Bloomberg, your mayor, he forgets, however, that openness can never be open-ended. A tolerant society is not a suicidal society. <laughs>